you can now hear Movie Heaven Movie Hell on Stitcher. Stitcher is ready on demand. Listen anytime, anywhere. Stitcher is an award-winning free app that lets you listen to all your favourite shows, plus discover from 20,000 news, entertainment and sports shows. You can also create your own custom playlists. Stitcher is available on iOS, Android, Nook, iPad and in over 4 million car dashboards. It's on demand and it's on the go. No downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. You can stream your favourite podcasts from Stitcher. Don't have Stitcher? Download it free today at stitcher.com or in the App Store. And please, leave us a review and rating on Stitcher. Thank you. Hi everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Movie Heaven, Movie Hell. Um, special for two reasons. First of all, oh my god, it's the 100th episode. How amazing is that, right? And, um, well, second of all, you may notice that I am not Simon Aitken, neither am I Keith Isles. In fact, um... Simon and Keith have done something spectacularly uh, brave, confident, and incredibly stupid for their 100th episode, um, in that they basically handed over the, the keys to the kingdom, the, the reins to the horses, to uh, myself and A Another. Um, hello, A Another. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. And um, we are going to be discussing... Uh, well, okay. The the subject of tonight's movie heaven, movie hell, is the collected short works of Keith Isles and Simon Aitken. Now, that's that's a pretty damn brave thing to do. Filmmakers the world over are celebrating tonight in the fact that there is there is payback coming for the amount of criticism and. Um, snark that the boys have thrown to the best filmmakers in the world over the past however many years this podcast has been running and now payback is coming um simon and keith have allowed us we too we we humble too to um pick at their works and uh and and, and well Actually, we're not going to be horrible about this. I mean, obviously, the, these guys are our friends. So, um, here, here. I think there's going to be a love, love here. Tonight, it's it, it's going to be absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. So let's let, let's introduce ourselves. Um, my name's Rob Wickings. You may remember me from such podcasts as uh, Rob and Clive Speakeasy, the A to Z of SFF, and uh, Verse Publishing's The Write Up. Uh, Simon has specifically pulled me out of podcast retirement for this particular podcast, and uh, I'm I'm delighted, um, uh, very slightly honoured, I suppose, uh, and a little bit unnerved to be to be able to do this. But here I am. Hello, it's been it, it's been way too long. Um, I hope you missed me. If you didn't, then well, okay, these things happen. With me tonight is um. Another friend of Movie Heaven, Movie Hell, uh, the Welsh Wolverine himself, Mr. Graham Williams. Hello. Hello. Wonderful. Woo, 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 woo. Uh, I, I, I have a, a fan base of um, of one here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. Hi. Yes, Mr. Mr. Graham Williams, um, who did guest. I did guest on uh, Movie uh, Heaven and Movie Hell uh, over the summer. Uh, for what was then the release of Logan, but um, the challenge set down to all us uh, for that recording was to go through the uh, entire canon of the X-Men non-comics. So we were talking movies and TV because Legion was also um, out there in the stratosphere. So, yes, I have... You've got four. being a movie heller and a movie heavener, yeah. And um, here I am back again, 
I'm looking forward to it. Indeed. We're, go- we're going to slightly rename the show tonight because, you know, this this is our show tonight. We can do what the hell we want. And, All right. Um, when Graham and I were um, uh, chatting <coughs> prior, to, prior to tonight's, uh, today's recording session, um, autocorrect threw up an, a, a, a nice little um, error, well, not an error message, but um, we were chatting about Movie Heaven, Movie Hell, and um, Graham dis- Graham's uh, phone decided to call it uh, Movie Heaven, Movie Hello. So that's what we're going to call tonight's episode. So there's there's no hell tonight. It's all hello, and I think that's a, that, that's that's a nice way to be looking at things, don't you think? A lot of love there, Mister Wiggins. A lot of love. A lot of love is is the way to go. We're all about the love tonight. We're all about celebrating and um, just gently poking fun at some of the um, the interesting choices that our filmmaking buddies Simon and Keith have made over the, over over the many years that they've been making films. Um. So let's let's set the ground rules before we start. We are talking about the short works of Simon and Keith, which means that we're not talking about um, Simon's Blood and Roses, for example. We're not talking about anything that he's done for his upcoming feature, Modern Love, much as I'd love to do so, because there are some fantastic little short films in what will be a great little anthology of, of movies. Um Neither are we talking about Keith's um, role parts where he's just acted in in a film. We're talking about the stuff that he's written and directed. So, but nevertheless, that still gives us a fairly broad range of material to talk about. And I don't think we've had any issues, Graham, have we, in um, in coming up with heavens and hellos uh, for both Simon and Keith? No, 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 not at all. Um, and. With my very handy spreadsheet here that I've created um, for this very podcast, we are looking at 16 films um, from both uh, Mr. Aitken and Mr. Isles. Uh, so we have uh, 10 from Simon and 6 from Keith there that uh, obviously we will go through, mm-hmm. uh, review and offer up a lot of love over. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, them, I, yeah, I love the fact that you've brought you've brought a spreadsheet you spreadsheet game to to this particular exercise. Um, I, I personally am just completely pantsing it, but you know that, 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 that's the way I roll. <laughs> oh, an image of you in your pants. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am I am wearing um, my legendary podcasting trousers tonight. By the way, yeah, the 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 the, the MC Hammer pants are out tonight. So uh, fantastic! Yeah, it's got. Should we get? Uh, have you got a photo of that to put on Twitter, etc.? Uh, I have photos. They will never be seen in public. <laughs> That is a shame. Maybe you could WhatsApp up me later. I, I, I will. I will. I will happily share those with you. Uh, it's, it's all about being comfortable when you're podcasting, really, isn't it? Of course. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Let's um, let's get down to business, shall we? Let's talk about um, best way of doing this. I think is is, is let's talk about Simon first. And yes. Fine. Let's go. <clears throat> let's go heaven first. And Graham, give us your first pick for Simon's heaven. Okay, um, me being me, um, I've come to this podcast undecided uh, with with the heaven, and I'll I'll explain why, because there are are two films uh, here that are, yes, totally different, Hmm. but um, they both either excited me or or moved me, and obviously that's, um, that's... what we go see the movies for, really, isn't it? Absolutely, uh, yeah. Uh, just entertainment, etc. Okay. So, by the time I think we finish this, I'm hoping then I can actually get off the damn fence and give you a decision. But let's talk um, goodbye and why I fight. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good choices. So, yeah. No, um, and okay, we'll start off with goodbye just because it's it's the earliest. Um, uh, released in two thousand and four, this is uh, you know a heartfelt uh, love story, um, akin to in 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 some small way, uh, truly madly deeply. Yeah, I got a vibe there, uh, mm. albeit slightly different. But yes, it's uh, it's um, based in London, um, and we start off uh, with uh, a very happy couple. Uh, a lot of smooching as mm. well, you know. So we're not looking at a PG here. Possibly we could be looking at, at a 12, 12A because uh, because of the smooching and, and the like. But no, joking aside, it, it's it's lovely. 
uh, to begin with. But then what you have is a very could be construed as a as a strange mix then because the female of the couple is actually quite open. You start to find out uh, that her hubby um, could be seeing someone else. He is quite unsure of himself. She is not. She's quite assertive about this. So this is interesting. Okay, it could be a, you know, a, a modern um, love story there. But as it moves on, you start to realise, actually, wait a minute, that there's there's loss involved here as well. So um, as it pa- as it uh, pans out, the yeah, we find that um, the lady uh, is actually deceased, and the uh, the hubby is just trying to move on, but really can't let go of her. But uh, in their conversations, she is allowing him to 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 um to go find someone else and to to end um the film satis uh, satisfactorily he does go to the grave and then just walks off with london in the background so for this one especially at uh, simon's early stages in being a uh, filmmaker a co-writer uh with ashvin kuma joshi on this as well yeah this would move me and i thought actually um, having never seen it until um, the last couple of weeks, um, yeah, uh, that is one of my heavens, mm. and and why uh, I can't decide there. So, Mr. Wickers, would you want to give your uh, two pennies worth on goodbye? Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a nice like you say it's a truly madly deeply kind of vaguely supernaturally kind of. Um, twist if you like on 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 the on the notion of um bereavement on the process of grief and of moving on it's it's nicely played um ashvin is always it pops up quite a lot in um in simon's film oeuvre for want of a better word and and he's he's very good in this he's he's he sort of underplays it a little bit but i think every, every, it's it's a well acted well written little piece with with like you say it it's very heartfelt it's it's very honest in its approach and um yeah like you say it it it, it finishes off with a with a with a positive conclusion there's no sense of darkness there it is about sort of no not the slightest yeah no. it, it, it's about finding your path through a horrible horrible point in your life and being able to move on and uh, and getting the blessing from from you, you, the person who means the most to you in the world. Yeah, yeah you, you feel um, that she knows him better than possibly he knows himself. And um, that, again, yeah, to agree, you know, it is um, played nice, um, played just to the right uh, tone as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you really feel these characters. Again, you know, about you know, a third of the way through, there is that... Strange element, a strange, you know, strange element for for those who are monogamous. That is, <laughs> <laughs> um, but then again, yeah, it, it, it you know it, it develops and opens up, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's the, very well done. Yeah, I think that's the nice thing about it. It's it's never really played as a ghost story. There's no sort of there's no special effects in it. Certainly, it, you know, it, it, it's it's about that sort of, that that sort of slightly theatrical kind of a thing where someone just enters and leaves or pops into shot and disappears again so so you've got that kind of little tension about is he isn't he is it an open relationship isn't it and then when you actually realize what's going on it's it's a nice moment Mm. absolutely and uh the uh the heaven I can't decide on your second uh, heaven. Yeah. That, 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 yeah, that's the those are phrases. Quick, write them down. <laughs> Point them. Um, why I fight now? Um, I did. Um, I was the way I fight. I, I actually watched after the uh, monologue triptych. Mm. Um, so yeah, after coming from some excellent drama, I thought there uh, with. Um, Benjamin Green uh, as actor there. You have Benjamin Green as actor in Why I Fight. Now, this one is one of the most stylized of Simon's films. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, it was just a short, sharp statement from a boxer's point of view. And it 
<laughs> Here we go. It delivered a punch. Boom. Look oh, at that. Oh, yeah, the guy's on form. <laughs> but no, it was just well paced, sharply edited. Um, it again, it was one of those. It was exciting, but actually, you got the passion of the boxer mm. that jumped that leapt up to the screen um, to me. Again, it was stylized, but hey, you know, I'm a fan of Hollywood movies too. But this one, yeah, it, it was just well done um, from a from a very different perspective to the dramas that that were there before. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I could have watched it in a different uh, different order and different light, but it did catch my attention as well. And some um good humor uh, at the, uh, at the end when the uh, when the credits are rolling and you've got uh, the names so you've got it was written by uh, Benjamin Della Green uh, <laughs> uh, for instance yeah so at least you know it's, it looks as if these guys had fun doing it and, and I had fun watching it fantastic um, yeah why I fight was was dangerously close to being my movie heaven as well it, it, it shows real confidence in Simon as a filmmaker Um Again, he's worked very closely with Ben Green over the years, and then these two are just bouncing off each other brilliantly. It's it like you say, it's punchy, it's fast paced, it's it's as long as it needs to be as well. Mm. Bear in mind, we are talking that's... something that's under three minutes long, and it's it's just this great, sharp, short, concise oh. piece of work that just does the job, and it's really well shot as well. I mean, yeah, yeah. One thing we should never forget is that Simon is, is is a cameraman as much as he is a director, and his camera work in this is absolutely top notch. So, yeah, why I fight is a is a really cracking little piece of work. It is a very very assertive and assured piece of filmmaking. Here, here. so there. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so my heaven for Simon. Um, interestingly enough, you couldn't pick between two films. I can't pick between three. My three are the monologue triptych. Um, I'll, I'll kind of explain why. Well, A, let's let's make a confession before I start. I have skin in the game here. I, I am on the credits of all three of the monologue triptych films. We did uh, see. Yes, we did. We did notice. We, yeah. did, we did put that on our spreadsheet. Yeah. Oh, well, right. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I was a colourist on, on all three of these films. In fact, it's pro- probably the, the first professional re- piece re- piece work that Simon and I shared before we sort of moved on and I, I graded things like Blood and Roses and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, monologue triptych was the, was the first of the three and they're, they're fantastic little short films. Ba- basically, what you've got, Monologue Triptych is a nested set of three short films that um, are a trilogy about an artist, again, played by Ben Green. We keep coming back to this guy, but you know, obviously it's, it's one of those relationships between uh, actor and director that, that if it works, it works, and they will keep working together, and they really do work brilliantly here. Um, he plays an artist, and... In the set of three films, he's basically discussing something about his past, something about his present, and something about his future. And what you come to realise as you kind of go through is that this guy is a bit of a mess. You know, he pre- he presents as, as very confident, very successful, very self-assured, but his life is kind of starting to fall apart around him. And that's what makes all three of the films so interesting is that you sort of come to realize this quite early on but at the same time it, you, it's it's kind of bolstered as you go through all three so you can watch all three films as separate entities and they they work perfectly well as separate entities but when you view the three together what you what you get is a very nuanced and well crafted picture of um of a particular character fantastically written it's written by ben woodywis who uh again wrote blood and roses he a fantastic um <coughs> filmmaker in his own right of course but I, I i think his scripts for all three of these are fantastic so if i had to pick one and um, I, I struggle but i'd probably pick the first one um primero 
purely because they're they're basically three stories. It, 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 it's it's Ben telling a set of stories, and the story to the first one is just fantastic. Um, so he basically tells the tale of the third or fourth worst thing he's ever done, which it's a birthday story where he talks about um, a meeting with his old old drug dealer, a Moroccan called Hassan, and a invert uh, insert quote marks here a fun bag. And I, I, I'm not going to say any more than that because I really do urge that you you kind of seek out um, monologue triptych Primero and then check it out because it's 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 a lovely piece of work. It's a really nicely done. Um, piece to camera basically yeah no i'd um uh, i really did get a lot out of um these three um but if i had to, if i had to choose if somebody did a chinese burn on me oh, and said we choose wouldn't, we wouldn't do that it's all about the love here no chinese burns that that's right but you know you know it should some some very uh, nasty aggressive person come along and, and try to Chinese burn me or at least um, mildly threaten the possibility of a Chinese burn fine then I would go for the third now um, I generally don't know how to pronounce this could you help uh, the third one is called Tercero Tercero fine Tercero. and I'll tell you why um, this one resonated at least um, more with me um, it's because of my dad myself okay so You've got the artist. Mm-hmm. He's there. Um, again, uh, agreed. You know, for good, a confident guy, you think. But with this one, as as um, the story, the monologue to camera, etc., goes on, um, he starts to unravel himself because he's telling a story about ultimately how how he's just about to lose his kids, how how. Um, uh, is other half uh, taking them away and to the other side of the world mm. now. That in itself, even reading that, w- would resonate. But the way that it's actually delivered by everyone there, um, not just uh, Ben Green as well, is is yeah, it's that's another one that, that just tugged at the uh, heartstrings. And again, uh, Ben Green really does play the emotion, but doesn't overdo the emotion. Mm, yeah. So tell there's anger you can tell there's disappointment you can tell you can there's just all these layers there or or, or frustration as well Mm -hmm. could you you know the questions like could he have done more and throughout this he is whipping the hell out of um the the ingredients he wants to make for waffles because as we do get told waffles are for breakfast for the kids so the whole um the whole act of him creating waffles are for the kids, so that there, uh, it, it's so great because you know, with whatever you know, my daughter has as a favourite. Should I um, be in that position? You know, w- would I go there and actually, you know, have that trigger of sadness? You know, something that that was uh, I would do for her, and it feels it feels as if he is doing that as well. He is actually. Um, creating these, and you know, there's, there's no sign of the kids. You don't know whether they can be there or not, or maybe he's just doing it. And then, um, uh, you know, the frustration of not being able to find uh, the waffle iron, which which was a, a moment of amusement. Mm. You know, digging through some through the kitchen um, cupboards to find something, not finding it. Uh, yeah, sorry, it was just amusing, but also uh, a bit messy with the emotions as well. So if I had to. Again, with the a mild threat of the possibility of a Chinese burn potentially, mm-hmm. it would it would be this one of the three, which is not to take anything away from Primero and Segundo three, very um, very um, different, even though they are shot in a, a in almost an identical style. Absolutely, uh, identical style, and uh, pretty much in the same location as well. I think mm-hmm. um, no. But, but, it, it, it's it's fascinating that you sort of zeroed in on the food bit as well because obviously well for me food is love and the <laughs> fact that he's 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 struggling to make breakfast i've been in the same position as as ben as well where it's a real struggle finding the right pan for the job the pan that has to be dug has to be dug out for this particular meal so yeah yeah, yeah great great believer in that as well you yeah, know food in film always important Brilliant, and um, I, I, a piece of advice as well for um, for Ben yourself. 
It's in the dishwasher. Oh, that's where the... Da- it, yeah. 95% of the time it's been Ab- put in there, I abs- tell you. Absolutely right. Absolutely flipping guaranteed, yeah. There you are. That's yours, gratis. Noted. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's move on to the, to the to the dark side of the street now. Let, let, let's... Uh, Let's say hello to hello. To, to, uh, to our other picks for Simon. Um, I'm going to make a start on this one. Um, okay. My my movie hello for for um, for Simon is uh, Post Its, which is it's a bizarre little film. It it it's it, it's a sort of five and a half minute short that's um, basically about a temp played by. The brilliant Victoria Johnson, who's who's a fantastic act, actor, um, who again has appeared in in quite a few bits and pieces of Simon's. Um, she's a temp in in a warehouse, and she's Lord. Well, she, she she's basically in for the day, but there are no staff in this warehouse. Instead, her day is is delineated by a series of post its that pop up, just magically and kind of guide her through her her working day where the film kind of falls over for me is that it would post it should make an absolutely cracking little horror movie you've got these magically appearing post-its you have a point about two-thirds of the way through where she decides she wants to leave and she can't the door's locked the post-its say you're not leaving until you're finished which is which could be you know it could it could go really dark from that point and instead she kind of finishes a day's work the post its tell her she can go she sort of smiles the post its say see you tomorrow and she just smiles and says oh we'll see and disappears and there's no the sense of kind of threat and tension that's been built up so brilliantly over the past sort of three uh, uh, over the first three minutes of the film suddenly just disappears over over the uh, uh, in, in the in the last third and although it's uh, with with simon's stuff it's always well shot it's it's always well acted the script is is fine as far you know it, it's a reason that it's pretty much a silent film obviously there's one person talking in it again with the post-its but it just feels like this massively wasted opportunity to to tell a a, a fun dark horror movie there's the, the, there's this real weird shift in tone two thirds of the way through that i just cannot get my head around so that that that's why for me um hello post-its you're in the sin bin i'm afraid interesting mm-hmm. interesting i don't see this as a horror i see it uh, as more of a um fun supernatural um uh, piece. Okay. So for me, I see um, not quite benevolent, not quite malevolent force. Right. I see it as more childlike. Okay. Um, with you know, you first see the post-its there. I think okay, someone's having fun, but they're you know, fun here. Temp seems to go along with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then as he goes on, more post-its appear, mm-hmm. and I think ah. Okay, there's a bit of magic there. I'm not so yeah. The, the, the magic, maybe even the supernatural mystery, yeah, the supernatural element really does filter through this uh, for me. And then, as as you said, there's a change in tone. Yeah, the temp gets a little bit uh, frustrated, but then a post-it then uh, arrives almost in the nick of time to say, okay. Um, now you can carry on with this work because ultimately what she has is a box and then when she's completed that box of of filing or sorting filing then the warehouse is to be done Mm. and then with her leaving and the post-it there I saw that there was actually a connection there myself so not not thinking on the horror angle I was looking at it okay there's there's a relationship there between mystery force call Mm. them you, you could call it the post-its. Yeah. You know, that these are the um, creatures, whatever. I didn't even think of that. I just thought, so there's force. Post-it there. Um, the wheel see 
as the uh, temp leaves. Now, for me, in my heart, with with the uh, smile and almost the wink, not mm, quite. Yeah. There, of her, the way we'll see, it's there's a bit of a flirtation there, hence why I thought actually you know, this here. I'm not talking about romance. I just thought actually that that's a, a nice touch. So that I believe. She will come back the next day, and I think that the postage would actually be a little bit kinder with her. Okay, that's that's a, that's a remarkably positive um, viewpoint on the film. Uh, but I, I I totally get where you're coming from there. I suppose, I suppose there is that it, it it it's it's how you feel that story is taking you. For me, I I, I could definitely see it going down the horror route, if you want. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I guess that's that's kind of me to a certain extent, and and the fact that. Simon kind of diffuses that and, and goes somewhere different with it. Could be a failing on my part as opposed to a failing on his, but nevertheless, it, it kind of just struck me the wrong way, really. So maybe it's my fault. Well, or, or, or maybe we both now return to post its with slightly different heads. With uh, fresh uh, eyes, and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Fresh approaches. But there we are. No, interesting. Yeah. Interesting cool. to take take on the two. Um there. Um okay then. Right, cool. So um you have a hello for Simon as well, don't you? I do. Hello blocked. Ooh intro ah yeah. Um carry on, carry on. <laughs> So um, my my written synopsis uh, into the um, lovely spreadsheet here. Did I mention I have got a spreadsheet for this podcast this You evening? did, and I'm really, really impressed. I'm really okay. impressed. Uh, I'll, I'll, I may share with you later. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. I, I think it should be posted uh, uh, with the podcast, frankly. Good. Let's do that. <laughs> anyway, a, a successful yet serious screenwriter has given... Guns, tits, and explosions as they remit for his next script from an outlandish producer. The writer struggles with himself and Robert McKee over selling out or telling the story he wants. Mm-hmm. Um, Barton Fink came to mind. Okay. Um, as, I, as I was watching it, and um, have been in a position where um, have been slightly blocked, but. Maybe it doesn't resonate because I've never been in the position of uh, selling out. <laughs> <gasps> no! Keeping no, it real, no, G-Man. Keeping it real. Ah, uh, man, no, I've never been, I don't even, I even got that far. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Um, for me, it after seeing uh, the fun of uh, Firepower and then, obviously, uh, it being sandwiched in with then Goodbye in my, in my viewing list, mm. uh, Blocked seemed flatter. Uh, than the others. Others were had a lot more energy in them. Uh, this one, it, it was it was a tale of one guy who would be wrestling with himself, but I just didn't see that pop out from the screen really. Mm. And and that's it. Um, yeah, uh, I, you know the, the I've heard many many people uh, go against Rob, Robert McKee. I actually had the book uh, that he's talking about and. Fine. There's only one half of a chapter that was actually useful for me, but <laughs> um, that that's as negative, I guess, as as I can get there. You know, I did at least get something out of the book. Um, yeah. So again, especially compared to the others, uh, blocked is my hello. Hmm. Um, blocked was very nearly my hello as well. To be fair, um, I'm not a great believer in writer's block for a start I mean speaking as a writer I've always any any writer worthy sort has always got four or five different projects that he can always go back to if one thing's not working then do something else I could not believe the notion of um, a big Hollywood producer giving a writer money to produce a spec script in two weeks with absolutely zero guidance apart from guns, tits and explosions. I know it's, it's probably supposed to be a bit of a parody, but I that instantly got my back up. Uh, again, Robert McKee is bullshit. It, it, it's just absolute nonsense. So I'm glad you got half a, half a chapter's worth of good stuff out of it. I didn't even get that far. Um, and I'm not a big fan of films about films, to be brutally honest. I, I, I just... 
there's enough stories out there that you don't need to be sort of spiraling around in this sort of self-reflexive sort of mirror gazing kind of a thing where you're talking about the thing that you're trying to make that you know um meta just doesn't really work for me so so there was a lot that was kind of banging around about this this story that i didn't like and uh, like you say it, it's it's quite flat it's quite statically told there's a lot of staring at computer screens which never makes for good cinema so um, unless we see what's on the screen itself yeah exactly and, and actually a lot of it is actually staring at blank screens as well because you're talking about writer's block so how uninteresting can you get really as uh, you know you're, you're viewing it on a computer screen you're looking at a blank computer screen that's not good storytelling it's not good filmmaking so yeah I, 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 i'm almost tempted to flip my hello and sort of say actually um yeah, blocked is my hello as well, but I'll, st- I'll stick with post. It's just. Are you sure? Because we've got the opportunity. We're at the hundredth here. We can we can go spectacular. We, you can go for two hellos or, or or change. Do you know what? Do you know what? You're absolutely right, G man. And I am going to do exactly that. I am flipping my hello. My hello will be as as Graham's is, and and I'm I'm putting blocked in the sin bin as well. Um, and yay so, for post its. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm going to watch post-its again with fresh eyes with your beautiful positive outlook and I'm probably going to get something fresh out of it so Absolutely. there you go yes. and of course it's got the the fantastic Victoria Johnson in it who who is always watchable so absolutely agreed absolutely there we go okay so I think we can let Simon off the hook now can't we well, for now yeah, yeah uh, let, let's see now. if something crop, crops up later eh? you never know you never know yeah. so let's talk about um Mr. Keith Isles, shall we? Yeah. And um, I'll. St- oh, shall I start? No, no. Let's you. Let's have you start with Keith's Heaven. Thanks. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, um, I was torn for a while. Right. But not anymore. Um, so my Heaven is actually uh, one of his later uh, films, mm-hmm. uh, Blood Right. Okay. Uh, and here um, it was written and cut ver- very, um, very well or, or stylishly, I'd, I'd like to say, but um, very interestingly. But then that was backed up with um, great acting and directing as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I try to summarize it. Um, so forgive me on this one so a confessional of a young woman regaling the tale of her of her husband and uh, hers plot to gain custody of a child through murder t- turns bloody <laughs> that's a very good synopsis actually well thank you very much yeah, very well done. Uh, 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 you know uh, it, it, it just came from from the screen really one so, yeah, man but... and his elevator pitch i'm impressed Thank you very much. Anybody listening out there? My name is Graham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough, Williams. Okay, so, uh, yeah, um, so Blood Right. Uh, and the reason uh, is that it's there with with the cutting, as I said, uh, with the e- editing, uh, as I mentioned, and the writing, is that it's told in various flashbacks and current uh, time as well. So you, you start off with a, with a confessional, which mm. we've all seen before. But this is actually a, a bit edgy because it's a confessional of uh, of murder. Mm. Um, so what you have is with each scene, the last word of that scene is then the first word of of the next scene. Okay, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it is nice. Okay, you could say it's a bit showy, but no, it really works here. There's a there's a tone here as well of there's a sinister t- tone. Then I should say, and I really felt that the acting um, is it, played out again, not overplayed either. So if you took, uh, you know, if you had everybody in a lineup and you took a photo, you would know who the um, main villains were to to the good guys, if you like. But ultimately, um, what resonated for me again, 
as a dad mm-hmm. is that the plot to murder is actually um, a plot within the family. So a brother plots. Ultimately, he you know he is the main antagonist. He plots to kill um, his brother and his wife so he could gain custody um, of their son, so his nephew. Ultimately, okay. yeah, yeah, and that's just horrible. I know we've got other um, urban chillers within this uh, list here, but that there again just just resonated how horrible that was. Mm. So personally, I felt something. But coming from the screen, I had uh, a very assured film as well. You've also got a, a villain who actually looks quite villainous, meaning not the not the antagonist, the brother, but the guy he um, hires to um, manage. Um, oh, the hitman! Everything. The yeah. hit. He was because I, I I think with the hitman himself, because we do uh, have uh, a hitman with a gun, blurred. Which did look at like Mr. Isles. I've not I, talked to, to I, I thought that, yeah, I thought that was Mr. Isles. Yeah, so no, no, the actual guy who, almost like the project manager of assassinations, yeah? His proje- project, project this time. Project manager, oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, manager, oh, oh, oh yeah, so he, he was the guy controlling it. Um, yeah, just he looked the part, but also was played uh, as well. And the location where that's going on. Again, in flashbacks, so, you know, we're jumping from different scenes. Mm-hmm. I think the tone was kept, even though we're jumping around. Um, was, let me get my notes now, because it's just off the Westway in London. I think it's called Valhalla Fields. Ah, oh, what a great name for a location. Yeah, now I've been there with, with the family now. I'm not sure if there's anything um, in the subconscious um, having been there on a happy time on a n- nice bright day, and then these guys are talking about murder. Don't yeah. know. Yeah, uh, I'll let the uh, psychologists work that out. That there we go. No, it's North Isle Fields. Ah, uh, uh, right. Forgive me. So it's North Isle Fields. So basically, they're two large. Uh, mounds that have had um, pathways carved onto them and they are uh, in the northwest of London off the Westway and from up above there you can actually overlook part of London as well so great location there but again other other locations the confessional everything just fits really nicely together in this one hence why um, it's my heaven cool it is a very very tightly tautly told piece of work um most of keith's short movies are pre- are pretty much in this kind of urban legend slash um sort of i don't know what you call them sort of sort of cautionary tale kind of a kind of, kind of a deal um they they usually start with a little card saying something like this 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 is this this story is based on true events, or this is based on an urban myth. So it's it's very much in that kind of a style. But yeah, Blood Blood Bright does does work very well, I guess, because it's not got the sort of the supernatural side to it so much. It's more of a it is very much more of a sort of thing that could almost be pulled from the headlines. You know, sort of um, jealous man decides to steal his brother's child, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and um, spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Pause. He gets away with it. He gets <gasps> the kid, and the kid and him walk away. They're they're in the they're in the playground at the end. They um and they walk away. He has um the son he'd wanted. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert number two. Pause. <gasps> the wife who'd co-plotted is also assassinated, as she regales the tale to the priest. Spoiler alert number three. Oh, my God. Oz. The priest gets it, too. <gasps> dum, dum, dum. It's it's an extraordinarily amoral piece of work when you think of it. It's, it's very... <laughs> it is. It's brutally noirish, isn't it? When you The more you think about it, you know, it, it is about this, this kind of incredibly single-minded quest for the father to get the son and nothing's going to stand in his way not his own brother not his own wife it's just like yeah anything that's standing in 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 his pathway just gets brutally and almost thoughtlessly eradicated just like no you're in the way out go boof good film 
Yeah. Nice little piece of work. Nice little piece of work. Yeah. Okay, so now I think we're into a, a very interesting um, point in the show as I want to discuss my movie Heaven for Keith at the same time that you want to discuss your movie Hello for Keith. Absolutely. That the, the film Hit him, Rob, hit him. The film that has explicitly divided the movie heaven movie hell 100 crew is the baby watcher so i'll start because this this is the heaven point of and then i i I will allow rebuttals from the other side of the floor um okay so the baby watcher is again it's, it's one of keith's little sort of urban myth stroke tight little almost tells from the crypty kind of horror stories basically um it's about uh a girl that that's um basically hired as a babysitter um comes in to um do the babysitting job while mum and dad go off for their anniversary meal um just sort of doing what she does you know a bit of telly whatever but the kid is is very very restless and uh, keep sort of crying out and she she's up and down all night sort of trying to trying to keep keep the baby calm and becomes increasingly unnerved or, or, or just sort of notices there's a pile of toys in one corner of the room and as part of the pile of the toys there's this dodgy looking clown character okay and uh, and all of a sudden you kind of know where this is going you see the dodgy clown and you know where you, where it's going could, could i just could i just um expand on that it's a creepy looking clown it's really creepy i don't know where they bought that from it's, yeah it's it, I, almost eyeless so so this the, 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 this clown is is nowhere near this at my house uh uh-uh. it is gonna give me nightmares it is super creepy super creepy i mean you know i, I suffer from a little bit of chorophobia anyway but yeah the, the, yeah this one is is it level creepy mm-hmm. and uh so so time goes on and the girl is is kind of struggling with the fact that baby won't settle down at a wit's end she kind of phones the parents who are on their way back so it says look I, you know i I need you back as soon as possible. I honestly can't get the kid to settle down. I think she's a bit freaked out by by that weird clown toy you've got in the corner of the room. And the parents just freak and say, we don't have a clown toy. Oh. At which point you suddenly, re- you suddenly cut back to the room and the clown gets up goes over to the kid picks the kid up you've got the parents sort of freaking out call the police get out the house and the babysitter for you know bravely goes upstairs to try and confront whatever is is up there and goes into an empty bedroom with a cot with three letters from from a sort of um, magnetic um, letter kit um, that you get on an average fridge it just says bye and it's just this extraordinarily creepy piece of work that I really dig I, 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 I think again I think my horror roots are coming out obviously tis, tis the season you know, we're recording this like the week before Halloween so I've obviously, I've obviously got my, my horror senses tingling and regardless of how you feel of this as as a piece of um, authentic storytelling or not. I mean, it is tagged as this is based on a true story, however true or not that is, I do not know. I, but I get the feeling it's the same sort of this is based on a true story that Fargo was based on a true story. It's that kind of a deal. But it just really works as this lovely, creepy, sneaky little piece of horror. And again, you know, the child just gets spirited away at the end. There's no real sense of where the clown came from. There's no real sense of where the clown goes. It, you know, you could, you could almost sort of argue there's an element of folk horror in there. It's just like, you know, the kid was spirited away by the fairies. But it really, really works. And it's really well directed. I mean, 
Keith does a great job here in, in just building the tension and building and building and building. And he's very clever as well in the the the, the, the babysitter's watching telly throughout. And every show that she's watching is uh, uh, are excerpts from Keith's back catalogue. So you see stuff from the other films that he's done oh, um, you know, oh, uh, oh, over the years. And I just think that's a really neat little touch as well. It's a nice little sort of nod mm. back to his history. So, yeah, um, The Baby Watcher was my movie heaven for Keith. Interesting. Mm. So, <laughs> uh, the baby watcher. Um, my my synopsis and um, forgive me, Keith. Is it, um, I, I have a babysitter that can't be bothered. Misses the fact there's a creepy clown watching <laughs> over the baby she's meant to be watching over. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> um. Hey. Really nice touches uh, in this one. Um, Rob, you've just mentioned uh, sat watching TV and there's uh, Keith's back catalogue and back catalogue uh, we've uh, we've enjoyed too over past cross lines and Fairview there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like that. Really like the uh, right the, the end, the last, the last shot on the by BYE exclamation mark in the cot that yeah very nicely Did, done very nicely very, done. very nicely done yeah okay would have had more of an impact if i'd actually thoroughly enjoyed it don't get me wrong you know um i stay the course you know this is, uh, this is a 10 minute film this one um maybe again personally as a dad baby's crying mm. Um, yes, there's, there's things called you know control crying or rest it fine, fine. But you do go uh, and, and check out the kid or, or walk around. Now, um, babysitters are different and the like, but I don't know when the it, it just had plot holes for me. Maybe again on a personal level or on a reality level, mm -hmm. looking at the urban chill urban myth side of things okay if, if you're going for realism you walk into a room and there's one of the creepiest clowns you've ever seen in your life people do watch the film um i'm not, I'm not telling anyone not to that clown that clown would give me that phobia um and yet the babysitter i see is almost a 1980s American baby, uh, babysitter who's just watching TV, could potentially then be chewing gum, eating pizza, get a boyfriend round, things go horribly wrong or horribly mm -hmm. funny, whichever movie you, yeah, you know you watched in the 80s. Yeah. And, um, yeah, nothing wrong with you know how tight it's directed, edited, acted and all the rest of it. Yeah, you know, um, Keith plays the dad as well, so he, does, he, seems, yeah. he seems to be having a nice time. Mm. Nice car too. Oh, very, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, you notice that with, with a lot of Keith's films. A yeah. lot of them are set in, in cars or feature cars very, very strongly. And, um, they're always so. really nice cars. Yeah, Keith, man. Yeah. Um, you kind of know what you do for a living, but yeah, all right. Yeah, 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 very, very, right very, yeah right. very, very impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, mate. just, uh, you know, go paying for a, for a bet, better babysitting, um, service. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's clearly interesting that obviously Graham is a dad and I am obviously not. That that that, that almost kind of makes makes the fact that he's chosen this as his hello and I've chosen it as my heaven. That you know the, the fact that Graham's clearly uncomfortable with the with the notion of the dodgy babysitter, whereas for me it's just like another horror trope, basically. So there we are. Mm. So uh, people watch it. Um, if you get nightmares, ain't my fault. Um, no, absolutely, that, that's it's Keith's. We're not playing, not we're not playing, playing the blame game here. But it is Keith Ailes' fault. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yes. there yeah. we are. Totally Keith's fault. Yeah, all over it. There yeah, it is. yeah. Which brings us to now. It, it's very slightly unfair here. In that, I, I almost feel that that Keith's got more hells than 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 heavens, which probably isn't isn't the case. But you know. Uh, but I'm I'm going to move on to my um, hello now, um, which is 
probably the earliest film in in in, in the entire oeuvre that we're talking about here. Uh, it's a film called Overpass. That is, it's a bit. Wait, well, it's not again. Largely set in a car. So, so, so we're we're seeing Keith's obsessions coming out here in 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 full swipe, um, but it, it, it's it's the story of um, a couple, boyfriend girlfriend, driving back from a day at the races at Daytona, get caught in a rainstorm, um, park up under the titular overpass, um, come across a hitchhiker. Who, who kind of talks his way into the car and um, ends up kind of at gunpoint forcing them to drive to to Key West. Um, shenanigans ensue. Um, the couple end up arguing more and more and more to the point where it freaks out the guy in the passenger seat, the, the so-called kidnapper, and he ends up freaking out and offering them his watch, all his money and the gun just to stop the car and let him out because he can't stand another moment in the car with them. Now, this just doesn't hang together as a plot at all. I think it, it's it you know it, it it's kind of slung together from a few odd weird urban myths and you know the the notion of the um, of the malevolent hitchhiker who incidentally is. Um, He's kind of a, this weird kind of Eastern European character. He says he's from the old country or something like that. So, so it's, you kind of got this vaguely objectionable racism in there as well. Um, and it just doesn't really work as, as, as a piece of storytelling. I mean, it's well shot again. It's interestingly enough, it's, it's, um, it's shot on film. I think it was shot as, as as part of a sort of rain dance thing or something like that because it's actually got a decent sized crew list. It's well lit. It's reasonably well shot, but the acting is really broad. Um, and like I say, the story just doesn't really hang together. And you end up at, at the end. Um, spoiler alert. Pause. The couple end up with the hitchhiker's gun and decide to go off and rob a convenience store for no real reason that I can see. However, um, it's it's just a weird little... It, it, it almost feels like a student film. It, it feels like kind of working out a few little kinks and storytelling passes and it's kind of, right, this is done, let's move on. Didn't like yeah. it. I'm afraid. I, I, I really didn't like it, and I really wanted to because this is the one that is shot on film. It's got the best production values, probably, of all of Key's films. Um, most of everything else that he's done has been shot shot video with with a, with a quite a minimal um, crew and cast. But a lot, pretty much everything else that he's done, he's done has got verve and a little bit of humor and just doesn't feel as kind of bloated and weirdly one note and weirdly kind of just nonsensical as this does interesting yeah <laughs> right okay no um a lot, lot lots of agreement there Rob. you know it's a 17 um minute film and Especially considering um, Keith's uh, output, etc. Um, afterwards, and how uh, tight he could you know, uh, write, write, mm-hmm. edit. This one, uh, I think the word you said was bloated. Um, I, I wouldn't say say that exactly, but again, it's a bit flat. Mm-hmm. It, it just, it almost, yeah. Again, to repeat what you said, it seems like a student film. It seems as if the first. And then what Keith did was to go on with lessons learned and um, produce um, work or become a, a better writer director from this experience. Mm-hmm. I felt that way. Um, there is uh, some humour to it, um, but the, yeah, the the twists come uh, and then the um, 
the actual you know, relationships between the characters, yeah, they 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 they, they don't they just don't um, work as well in that. Um, there isn't that drama to drive the story. There, there, there is conflict, but it's conflict of uh, a nagging, arguing couple. Yeah. Now, um, that to me is not uh, horrific. That's an annoyance. <laughs> <laughs> and it's certainly not enough to sort of chase yeah. you out of yeah. the car screaming and sort of give, you know, trying to give them their, all your money and your watch yeah. and your gun just to let you out. But I wouldn't say that the film is annoying. That is nowhere near where I'm coming from. It's just that if you were to portray, you know, and again, because Keith goes for uh, element of realism here, mm. um, you know, you can get enough of that in real life. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but no, here again, you know, yeah, production values, um, yeah, some really nice shots. Um, no pun intended, because no, the gun was not fired. Mm. Uh, but some really sh- shots around. Um, it's I thought it was a great start to where uh, the the couples arguing is over whether they give the guy a lift. Yeah, yeah. so they pick yeah. him up because it's it's a horribly rainy, stormy night. Yeah, so I thought, okay, yeah, th- th- there's your conflict, there's your drama there, and then it's uh, a piece about a guy who. Um, you know, the, the, the twist is um, he gets annoyed the hell out of them, uh, gives them a gun and, and runs off. But this Max guy apparently is a hijacker. So what was he, you know, does he have a bag full of guns? Does he have a guy, uh, you know, is he, has he just reformed his way? Because all American uh, couples driving through Florida uh, on a stormy night are going to be this annoying? I don't know. Um, too many questions, really. Uh, there we are. Yep, that, uh, but... That... But yeah, there was those humour there. Um, I did see it again as the platform to which Keith um, bounded from to then go on to make the likes of you know Cross Lines mm-hmm. uh, Blood, and Blood Right as well, which uh, are two um, excellent films in my humble opinion. Absolutely right. Now that's a, that's a very valid point. Actually, it is it is it's very much work of a nascent filmmaker and from there you can sort of pluck out key themes that Keith uses in a lot of his work from then on in so again maybe I'm being a little bit harsh here and and, and absolutely fair dues that there, there is value in it but it's it, it's not his best work by any means um, as I feel I've been insanely negative towards Keith <laughs> over the past sort of 15 20 minutes I, I will just point out that um another one of the films of his that i really did like was driven insane um which again has got has got a, a lot of his key themes in there you've got the car you've got the, the the weird little twists in it you've got that sort of dark sensibility to it um but some really good performances from um Longtime pal Maria Thomas from uh, Savra Regis. Um, our pal um, Clive Ashenden. Whatever happened to Clive Ashenden? What a man! What a dude! I'd love to talk with him to to, to him again. Um, can I just, uh, just 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 add that to the uh, on the uh, Clive Ashenden performance? Uh, let me get my notes here. Yeah, where Clive helps. Uh, a guy plays snakes and ladders. I've never seen that in a movie before. Yeah, yeah. If it, and uh, it's actually a bit of amusement. So um, Clive plays an orderly in a hospital and then is helping somebody um, toss some dice. Think of that. What you what, what you will. Yeah. But no, it, it was rather amusing that you, know, you shake, shake shake the dice there. But um, no, some yeah. I agree. Compl- brilliant performances all round. A really a real. Um, chiller this one you know a real horror here and i'm not surprised that you brought up that yeah you said that your um horror senses were tingling mm. um a bit too uh a bit too nasty for me as it pans out but not to take anything away from uh the rest of the film it's just not usually my, my cup of tea there no absolutely but but you know as we're in the season i think um if you want a tight concise nasty little piece of work 10 minutes long to pretty much to the second then driven insane will 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 do you well 
And uh, uh, stay till the end of the credits, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. So, no, so, yeah, um, uh, a nice film. But, again, um, you know, we've we've got scary clowns and scary guys in masks doing nasty things to, to somebody. Hmm. Yeah. Come on, Keith, um, I, Keith, man, come on. Make a comedy. <laughs> do, do a romance. Do. You, you, you just, you, you're just too dark all the time. Yeah, well, when, when when Harry met Rain Man or something, that's, come on, we can, we can do it, one. yeah. No, I, 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 if it was Keith, it'd probably be like when when Harry met Candyman, to be completely honest. Yeah, with a really nice car, sports <laughs> car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, blimey, I think that's it. I think that's us, isn't it? Well, that, that that's um, that's our um, heaven and hello. Yeah, absolutely. Could very well be. I, do, I, I, uh, I can sing, but not in key. I can hold a tune in a bucket. So, you know, we, we, we could try and end with a song, Mr. Wickens. But, oh, uh, do, you, uh, do you know what? I think our listening public would thank us if we didn't do that. I think they would pay uh, for us not to. They would pay very nice. Um, if you're interested in any of the movies that we've been talking about uh, this evening, this evening, this, this recording, um, if you... Scoot yourself over to that there YouTube and either check out Simon's Independent Runnings playlist or Keith's British Isles. That's E Y L E S British Isles playlist. Then you can you can look at all the films that we've been talking about tonight, and um, you can make and more uh, and more. Uh, yes, indeed, and more. There there is a wealth of movies to enjoy there so um get yourself over there check them out and if you want to respond back to 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 the guys about um what you've heard if you agree with us if you disagree with us we we honestly love to hear any responses that you've got for us on that um that's that that is pretty much it for us for tonight. could i could i just say uh thanks to uh simon and keith firstly for uh, producing and sharing these films with us. Absolutely, um, yes. Um, some, but not all, of their work, and uh, long may they uh, continue as well. And thank you for um, inviting my good self and Mr. Wickings um, to present, talk, and otherwise have a bit of a laugh Yeah. Um, on the 100th podcast. It's been an absolute, absolute pleasure, guys. Yeah, thank you ever so much. It's been an absolute honour, and you know, I, I, as I said at the beginning, ever so slightly humbled to be um, dragged back out of ret- podcast retirement to um, to introduce this hundredth episode. So, um, hope we've done you proud. Um, we have some boilerplate for you, so um, please do listen carefully to the following promotional announcement. You can listen to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and all good podcast providers. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Just search Movie Heaven, Movie Hell. And please, leave us a rating and review on iTunes or Stitcher. It all helps. Thank you for listening. And join Keith and Simon for the next episode of Movie Heaven, Movie Hell. That's it from us. Um, thank you again for bearing with myself and my good buddy Graham Williams as we've um, discussed the short film work of Keith Isles and Simon Aitken. Um, hopefully, speak to you again soon. And the next episode will be coming up uh, where Keith and Simon go into great lengths as to um, our particular. Uh, societal and um behavioral defects uh as befits befits the fact that we have basically been slagging them off for the last hour and 10 minutes (laughs) 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 anyway goodbye yeah yeah see you later